Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the 113th tutorial with Qt and C++. Alright, if you've been following along here, you know that we have built our program along with Zlib and QAZip. Um, there was a little bit of a boo-boo that I kind of feel I need to correct right now. Um, my zip one, we actually included these guys right here, and that actually included the source code, so you really don't need any of that because we were baking it right into the program, which is, well, what we're going to do for this video. So if you want to use the external library, you just get rid of that, and you're just going to use the headers, and it runs. Whoops. Wow, can't even get the right program going. And that is how you would externally link to it right there. What we're going to cover in this tutorial is, well, you guys did this. So I'm going to fix that error for this guy. I'm glad I noticed that before I published it. Everybody would have been like, what is going on here? All right, so we're just going to make a new command line application. Go into the source, or I'm sorry, the project file. It's been a long day. I've written this whole series in one day. So, And we are going to just grab the extra C++ files. and the C files. So if you're going to download the code off my website, this is the code I'm going to publish. So my zip one will actually use the QA zip library and my zip two will have the software or the source code burn right into the program. As you can see, there's the source code. So you will not need a DLL for this. Now if we go out here, we see my zip two. Ta -da. We will actually need to grab the Zlib library and paste that in there. And then we can just take the same program, copy that, paste it in here. So we have the exact same thing. Set this as our startup. Give it a good build. Make sure everything links correctly, which it should. Tick tock, tick tock. There we go. And once again, ta da, it just works. Now, we know this works. Why am I doing a separate video on it? Well, I wanted to discuss when to do this and when not to do this. Um, reason being, my vid one, or my zip one, now that I modified it, I terribly sorry, I apologize for that. Now that I modified it, it actually does use the external DLL or system object. You would use this method when you want code reusability, meaning you're going to have several programs that are going to reuse this. You don't want to have to remember the, you know, the QUA's header files and source files and all this other stuff. You just want it to work. You, know, you don't want to clutter up your program. Now you would use the all-in-one method here if you wanted all of your stuff nice and compact and you just wanted to distribute two files. Personally, I like to distribute as many files as I can just to clog up people's hard drives. I'm just kidding. Um, this method is better in my opinion where you're actually distributing QAZip and libz and your program simply because if there's a modification to QAZip, like if you find a bug or if the author releases a bug fix, you can just distribute that SO rather than rebuilding your whole app. That's the beauty of it. Now, if you wanted to do a static build, um, you could actually do it this way, the number two way that we're talking about today, myzip2, and you would just need to distribute myzip2 in the zlib library. Whew, that's a mouthful. So questions, comments, concerns, let me know. I'm going to zip this whole directory up and throw it up on my website. That way you have exactly everything you're seeing right here on my screen. Uh, be sure to visit my website, www.voidrealms.com. Um, it's been an adventure. I apologize for that mix-up. Once again, the updated one will be on my website. If you just see sources main, that means you're using the library. If you see sources and all this stuff, that means you're using the actual QA zip in your program and you do not need to include the library. That's all. Thanks.